Okay, so welcome to, uh, I guess this is the March Thermometers uh, Hangout. So for the agenda, um, so let me go quickly around the room, so that will be okay. I'm John, I work on the compiler. Uh, Bhaskar. Jyotu. Roberto. And on the... Okay, I'm Brian. Yeah, and I'm Daniel. Anyone else? Colin? I'm Colin. I work at Centro. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, Ray, right? Yeah, I'm Ray. Uh, I work at Google. <laughs> <laughs> and Julian, right? Yeah. I'm Julian. I'm working on the GSS resource. Okay. Okay, so uh, I think I didn't have too many topics on the agenda. One was uh, basically 2.6.1 and where are we with that. So last time we talked about it, uh, we have Daniel and Thomas uh, are the, sort of the release managers of 2.6.1. So Daniel, do you have anything for us in terms of progress, dates, other kinds of things? No, I, I don't have anything yet. Okay. But uh, do we have whatever fixes we have for 2.6.1 in there, or what is the... So mostly Thomas is looking at the fixes. I wanted to um, actually take a look at the end of the week and see what we got in so far, and then okay. start setting dates. Um, Are there any high priority outstanding fixes that haven't been made yet? Anything you need Thomas to push? Thomas had, had two things that he wanted to get in um, that, if I recall correctly, that are not in yet. I think there was um, there there are two things that I'm kind of. I'm aware, aware of. I think Christian Goudreau had an issue with Jetty 8 um, support. Uh, Server 3.0 spec basically was not working properly. And um, just today there was somebody who reported a bug in the GWT community forums on G+. Let's see if I can find it. Um, he was asking if it could be fixed for 261. Let, let me look at Go look at it and I'll get back to you. Okay. Uh, I think the JITA problem is the class loading problem. I'm, I'm not sure if the problem is uh, uh, Christian still haven't connect, contacted us what exactly the problem they are having. At least I don't know if they have a problem, the same problem as the class loading or something else. Okay. Okay, yeah, I think uh, that's Daniel. If you talk to Thomas, see if you can come up with some sort of a. Uh, at least we can say, okay, this is a date. A cutoff date for that 2.6.1 so people know when to get all their fixes in. Uh, but ideally, we should only be fixing regressions uh, from the previous major release. Right? Um, yeah, so we don't want this is like an incremental bug fix release meant to solve just critical issues. Um, otherwise, we'd spend a lot of time just validating. We already okay. fixed the pitches we have. Okay. I found the bug the guy was talking about. It's a bug in um, UI binder, the UI call import tag. Um, I just posted the, the bug to the chat, the group chat. It's okay. ID 8641. Um, so I don't know uh, whether or not this is like a high priority bug, um, um, but something we should take a look at if it's easy to fix or not. You cannot see the. You can probably send the send it email. Yeah. Okay, it's uh, 8641 if you want to just search for the issue. Okay. 8641. Okay, thanks. Uh, let's see. Um, but, uh, so the other one on the agenda I had was 2.7. So I, I guess as as they talked about in the steering committee meeting, we decided we would try to get 2.7 out around the Google I.O. time frame. That is, uh, I think that's sort of end of June at this point. Google I.O. is June 25th. Um, so I think, so, so I thought we'd just discuss a little bit around it. I think that the key one was the modular compilation and improved super dev mode for that yeah. uh, while preserving compatibility with, um, um, with IE8 uh, and above, right? Okay. I think that was the, the so you want to update us on yeah. that? Yeah, so, okay. um, Kind of in the home stretch with uh, modular compilation. I've been working for the last two ish weeks on uh, final integration with super dev mode and fixing the issues that uh, surface there. Um, I'm kind of stuck on a weird issue right now where um, I needed to revamp the way entry method holder init uh, functions. Um, the, uh, the old code path was basically duplicating the GWT create uh, handling and uh, 
sort of the, uh, the rebinding logic and the error handling. And rather than rebuild that exact same logic, um, rebuild that logic twice, once for monolithic compiles, once for separate compiles, I uh, switched it over to a generator-based system so that instead of us synthesizing the body of the function and handling all that logic ourselves, I synthesize a class that calls gwit.create, it's just a Java class source code, and let all our existing uh, framework handle it. And um, that worked for all of our tests and then blew up a bunch of applications because a lot of people's entry point classes are private and can't be accessed by generated source code. Um, so I'm back on having to synthesize that stuff to get around public-private constraints that we've never honored, apparently. Um, and uh, it passes the, the new version with uh, synthesizing just the quick create calls and letting the rest of our pipeline handle that the way they normally do, so it's still a cleanup, um, is working in all of our smoke tests and tap tests and then failing in, uh, an application I know of. So I'm trying to debug what's different about that application. Um, so that's where I am on that. Uh, uh, kind of where the rubber meets the road and dealing with really kind of cryptic edge case issues. So. Uh, the private issue, is it, uh, is it the something sold by the Disney access? I, I tried that. We, me and Roberto looked into that a lot. So um, in JS, so basically when you use gwit.create, you have to pass a class literal, not a reference to a class literal. It has to be an actual class literal, mm -hmm. otherwise it blows up. Um, and we didn't think it was possible to get a ref to have a class literal in JSNI that you sort of instantiate there. But it turns out it is. There is a way to do it. But if you synthesize, if you, you write JSNI where you you make a call to gwit.create and you pass it a class literal, it, you, we can parse that. But it exists as JS invocation nodes, um, not J uh, nodes. And so Unify AST's normal with create handling and uh, magic method, all that stuff, doesn't even see it. So it was a question of whether or not I change Unify AST to be able to look inside of JSNI functions to look for quick create calls to retarget or not. And it seemed like that was going to be more work than going back to partial synthesization. So it's so, good that create the instance in the Java code. And, uh, but you, if you do it in the Java code... Instantiation part. Yeah, so the problem is, let's say we use JSNI just to get a reference to the class literal, because that gets you around the public-private constraint on the, being able to even reference the class. At that point, what you're returning from JSNI is a reference to a class literal, and it's illegal to pass a reference to a oh, class literal to a right. create call. You cannot even write create that to create yeah. it unless it's private. It, it's not OK. Yeah. So um, just an idea I just thought of. Suppose you <coughs> had a variant on grid create that takes a string literal instead of a class literal. And I don't think we would want to expose it. It could just be a private thing that you use. Yeah. So that might be a way. It, it might be a way. So that um, that would also require changing uh, the way what create is handled in Unify AST. Um, and oh. it's, not, it's not actually clear whether or not that would get around the issue I'm having right now. So it's possible that in the past, so in the past, Unify AST had its own implementation of when I see a create call, let me talk to the rebinding stuff, uh, or execute generators, figure out what the rebind is, and swap out the call. Um, and there's a duplicate implementation of that in the entry method holder in it. Uh, creation infrastructure. And it's possible that the old, because there were two implementations, that they were actually different. And so it's possible that the error I'm getting now is not a result of me uh, um, synthesizing in a way that lets Unify AST perform the rebind. It's possible that this would have failed even if I'd gotten past the public. Right. I, 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 I have a potential uh, way around this, maybe. Um, actually, maybe I'm wrong. I was just thinking, why not pass an interface where it, the generic type parameter of the interface is the class that you want to run the generator on. Like pass in a, you know, pass just like you do with UI binder, right? Pass in, or, or the editor framework, pass in like a um, uh, gwit.create, you know, entry method maker, open bracket, this class, close bracket, right? Okay, I'm sorry, I zoned out a little bit there. I think oh. what, what you're describing would lead to the um, the class literal that when it arrives to the quick create call would be a reference, which is currently no, 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 not the reference. What I mean is you pass in a class literal to an interface okay. that is parameterized by the class that you want to target. It becomes a type argument to... It's a type argument. Binder. 
Is right. The type of so you, pa- you pass in like you know foo open bracket private class close bracket dot mm-hmm. class. So you're passing. Would, would that still fail because yeah. the class is private and so you can't even? Yeah, the problem is it. the class itself is private, right? It's oh, not okay. Exclusive, I, I, right? It's in, private. Yeah. In, in any so case, you already work around that yeah. problem of being able to synthesize the nodes. Yeah. The problem is that now the pruner somehow thinks the on module loader is not. It's not called and it prunes it. So, yeah. so it's, I don't know if it's in the yeah. unified state flow into or, or. Yeah, the... and it's weird because you would think that if that code's getting pruned on module load invocation uh, is getting pruned, that it's because the control flow is not even walking the init function. But that's not the case. I, I've verified that's not the case. So it's it's a weird issue. I've we like what we guys are supposed to work around for. I've already worked past that. I've got like a different problem now. Well, is it is it the case that maybe the class is not considered instantiated? Because it has to be both, the flow has to be both walked and the class has to be instantiated. Yeah. It to yeah be it, it, it's possible, but here's what's weird about it. So um, it's failing. Um, this particular application, when I look at the output, the, the init function contains five different um, GWT create call instantiations and then on module load. And the very first one is a user agent asserter, right? Yes. Um, and that one does not get pruned in all of our tests and several applications and is getting pruned for this particular application. So it's something different about this application, I think. I, I, my, my guess is that they're doing a custom rebind override of the normal user agent asserter uh, um, replacement and that their overridden class is different in some way. Oh yeah, you know, I, I actually do that. I do that for you in some of my apps. I've overridden both yeah. user agent asserter and document mode asserter because they bloat code, and I was basically trying to just get rid of them because I didn't need them. Yeah. Um, so that might be something like that. Yeah, I yeah. just need to look into it. I only got that far uh, yesterday, so I'm going to look into that part this morning. Okay. Okay. So that's Thanks. just a status update. Okay. It's weird issues. Okay. Okay, here yeah, we we'll continue the discussion on that. Any other things for um, 2.7 progress on any anything else that people want to report on? Uh, Brian, do you want to say anything about super dev mode? Are we, we continuing or, to get better, right? Um, I've been working on landing. Well, what I'm going to do is land a null check, and this isn't for 2.6.1. This is this is afterwards. Um, Essentially, have null checks for everywhere where we convert an instance method call into a static method call. Um, before fixing that, I have to land another fix to the stack uh, trace emulation code, where it's it doesn't seem to work right in the case where you are cons- cons- calling a constructor with arguments and the arguments is a function call that gets inlined and that screws up the location when the function actually gets called. So that happens often when you're constructing an exception and, and inlining can screw it up. So, but I'm pretty much ready to check that in and then I can, can turn on the null check thing because we'll be passing all the tests and um, beyond that I think the next thing is going to be looking at testing um, because, uh, you know, I think what we're running into is that because you've usually used developer mode to run quick test cases, we, we haven't had a lot of experience actually debugging using, uh, using web mode test cases. I mean, I think maybe GokDuck has, but... but um, but I, I, I think the idea is that the user experience for a good test case might not is not as good if you're in web mode. So um, we might okay. want to look into that more. I, I know, Gokta, you, you've been working on cleaning up like stack trace creation and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Oh, um, I, just, I just wanted I to add one thing with respect to uh, super dev mode usability. Um, there was a thread on Hacker News like a couple weeks ago mm-hmm. about uh, source map formats, and I think you saw me commenting in there. And, and um, yeah. the, the source map format does include um, uh, symbol map in it. And mm-hmm. I thought that the reason why Super, uh, the white Chrome DevTools was never deobfuscating the stack trace was because we weren't generating the source map properly. But I actually went and, and checked out the Chrome source and looked at. Um, DevTools, and actually they don't 
even look at that field. They throw it away. Right. So we, okay. I, I think we should have a talk with uh, the DevTools team about actually getting that, make, making use of that field because that would actually make this the, the regular uh, debugging uh, yeah. work a lot better uh, in, in DevTools. Yeah, yes. I think that makes a lot of sense, right? So it, it, it seems like a like a little bit of a bug that they don't see that field, right? I, it's really yeah. the the, the, yeah. the if the console is this r regular JavaScript exception, the links are working perfectly. And if you have the source map, and you click the links, you can actually see the real source line and code. Problem is, I think they don't translate the exception to a more readable okay. format. They uh, they they specifically don't tr translate the function name. That's that's like in any stack trace. There's you know there's the line number and the file number. There's also <laughs> a, a way to deobfuscate the function name, and they don't do that. It, yeah. It's okay. it doesn't seem like that big a deal in super dev mode because we're running in pretty mode. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I guess it would be nice if in I guess if you're trying to debug in obfuscated mode or something, then it would certainly be nice to fix those. Yes. Yeah. 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 There's one other thing about usability in super dev mode that I noticed. Maybe it's just me, but if you start debugging an entry point right away, then it hasn't mm -hmm. done uh, downloaded the source maps yet, and we'll, you will end up in the pure JavaScript, and there's no way in Chrome to actually get back into the source. Oh map. yeah, yeah, I know about that one. That's uh, if you go and you just like click on the stack frame again, like when you're navigating in the debugger, and you can jump up and down between stack frames. If you click on that, it will refresh. Oh. And then you'll end up in the Java code. Okay, so that's a browser problem then. It's a race condition. The problem is that when you when you start executing a JavaScript file, um, the source map downloaded the source map. Yeah, or finished the source, download. It's it's asynchronous. Yeah. So okay. they, I actually f did file a bug with them that they're saying that you know if the source map has loaded by the time you get to the the I don't know. We need some kind of. Uh, I, I think what they should do. I think what they should do is after they successfully load the source map, they should refresh, re refresh the editor window, basically. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't we just, as we're working now, just wait for the source map to load? We could. Yeah, I, I. And do the execution of the entry point until until we have if we're in depth, no. uh, until we have the source map. I think delaying the entry point is kind of a good idea because it kind of goes along with the other thing I was talking about where if you start executing the JavaScript early you might, you, before the window is even loaded you probably you do want to execute like define all the globals but you probably might not want to execute the um, actually execute the entry points until the, it's fully loaded so I, I think it would be good to have a way to execute that separately Okay. Like a custom linker or something? Yes, yeah. yeah, something like that. <laughs> okay. okay, thanks. So uh, I also noticed Julian is on the line. So Julian, do you want to uh, talk about JSS resource to where, where that's yeah. at? Uh, yeah. So um, just a, a little status about uh, GSS resource. Uh, I, I commit uh, yesterday the, the converter. So it, it's a Java class that take uh, a CSS file that is used with the CSS resource and produce a new CSS file compatible with the new syntax of the, the GSS resource, so it works. Uh, I have still some work to, to, to do. Uh, I, I think about the, the URL at rule in CSS resource. We have a URL at rule uh, to get the URL of uh, image resource or, on, on a, or another resource. I have to... to to do that in the GSS resource. After that, I just have to write the unit test and the documentation. I think the the the, the work on GSS resource will be done. But I have a question for you guys. Um, I, I would like to have a, an idea on how we will release the library in the future. So do, do you plan to officially support this library? So I mean, create a, a project on Gerrit and put the code on Gerrit and start the code review, or uh, we can continue wait. with the GitHub? Uh, so if you feel like it's not going to take too long to do the project, I think we can continue using <coughs> your current repository. 
and make it available internally here. Uh, see how it works for people. And if we get all green flags, then we can actually make it official part. Yeah, of because uh, long term we wanted to make this the replacement, yeah. right? And we wanted it to be in part of and parcel yeah, of yeah. width. And so, um, yeah, so I so think that may be a good thing to do is to try it internally. I, I don't know how many people are eager to use this. Somebody was already yeah. thinking about it. So, uh, okay. yeah, I, I think we can look at how mature is it, if, if it looks very mature, and if you feel like we're going to be able to make it official soon, I don't think we need to change the repository. I, we can just make it part of the official SDK and replace the CSS, original CSS resource. Are you saying bring it into our distinguished repository? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Uh, but if we feel like it's going to take longer to be mature and or it's going to be painful for people to migrate, then we can make it part of quit project. So are uh, there any... Uh, but not make it part of the... So, so are there any migration concerns? I mean, this is not... It's generally compatible, right? Or there's anything yes. that's... Uh, a couple of things. No, I should be fine. That's the reason I said we can be more... So maybe one thing might be to have like some sort of a migration documentation. And when you write the documentation, have a little bit of migration things, as in what what people need to do, right? Julian, yeah. Chosen, yeah, yeah. But other than that, this is great. I think I really like this contribution thing. This, yeah. yeah. And uh, I think if it starts getting used internally, uh, I think we can quickly get feedback on production and yeah. uh, quickly promote it to be the proper one. Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. Do you guys can't think of any reason for someone to keep the existing CSS resources for CSS format for some reason? There might be some features in there that we're missing from CSS resource that might keep people from migrating. So I would not immediately replace CSS resource within GWT. I would actually just move GSS resource in, start migrating um, internal people off to GSS resource and see if it goes really well, we can start deleting CSS resource. But I would keep them um, in quit for, let's say, a couple of releases just overlapping uh, and deprecate the CSS resource so external people have an easier way of migrating as well. So, so can we also make this available to external yet yeah. or it's not quite there at this point or do we want to, I don't know what we want to do. Yeah. So, so but maybe are people, anybody outside starting to, which is it? do we need to make some announcements? Or we that's what I was going to suggest. If we're going to um, suggest that people internally try it out and then test out its maturity before we want to roll it in, maybe we should make a similar announcement in our external. Yeah, right. Because we have the contributors, but people there don't say. write apps, right? We want to put it in, in yeah. the main I, list and say. Yeah, I, I yes. think that's a good idea. Julian, can you make an announcement in when you think it's ready? Can you make an announcement in the community page? And perhaps Ray and others can share with their followers. Yeah. Or right. maybe like one of us should. Yeah, make I think Julian said he still has to write documentation and a few other things. So yeah, when it's ready. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, because I I wanted for for example to release uh, the first snapshot on Sona type for the Maven user, but for example I cannot use the com Google grid for the group ID Maven because I don't have the the right to do that. Uh, you know, it, it's why I'm, uh, I want to know if we put that on, on com.google.grid or if I continue to, to work with my own group ID and after that we move. Yeah, I would prefer that we uh, actually have the com.google.grid at some point, but I think what we should do is we should maybe yeah. use it internally first then. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's yeah, a better yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think... Yeah, let, let, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to say let's let's keep it in Maven uh, right now separate and up to it on, under com Google Grid and see. So we actually have internal people that are very interested in using this. So I think we're going to move this. Um, um, we're going to move your code internal to Google and have some projects just try it out and see how it goes for them in production. And if we feel it's really good, we can just move it into the Grid SDK and then we're just going to publish it with the user job. Okay. Yeah, so it's so better to just wait on that external yeah, one and, and get, it, get, it, get the internal testing done. I think that may be the best. Yeah. We can have a few alpha releases in non grid sonotype and then yeah. change it later. Yeah. Yeah, but this looks like a solid uh, feature for like 2.7, right? Once we uh, uh, are. Depending maybe, on, depending on how frame. it works. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. Okay, but it's a good, good candidate. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, 
you already documented what are incompatible right now, right? Other than having, I mean, uh, the, the converter is going to be convert most of, is going to be able to convert everything or? Is uh, norm normally you should be able to convert everything. Okay, then that's even one more reason to not have two together. So yeah, let's see what happens uh, when people start using it and if you don't get any red flags, you can make it. Sure. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Um, see anything else on 2.7? Um, any other features? Any Ray, you want to update us with the progress with the JS interface stuff? I know that's sort of an experimental feature for that, but yeah, um, yeah, I'm I'm probably going to send. I think hopefully is the final chain set for review today. Uh, basically, I've been debugging a problem. Um, most of the examples and test cases I've done did not actually have the code splitter turned on. And um, when I ran the full smoke uh, test case, the the um, some of the some of the test cases that invoked the code splitter failed, with like null pointer exceptions in in the uh, control flow analyzer. So I have to g actually go back and figure out um, what's causing that. Um, so <clears throat> once I track that down, then I'll uh, basically um, you know put the final hopefully the final patch up for review. The um, you know, I mean, get, we, we theoretically could have this stuff ready for 2.7, um, but it would have to be hidden behind a flag. For one, it's not going to work with regular dev mode. Right. And, for, and for two, it's highly likely to change. I mean, we haven't, even, we haven't really started building any kind of widget or web yeah. component stuff on top of it yet, and so it's highly likely we'll find something that we have to change. And so yeah. we don't really want people dependent on it. Uh, before we finalize yeah. it, yeah. yeah, especially the part for the prototypes that's very likely to change, and that's not fleshed out. But perhaps we, if we see like it's gonna be <clears throat> mature enough, perhaps we can just make the JS interface part uh, enabled by default, and the other extensions as a can be hidden behind yeah. the flag. Okay, yeah. so we'll see. We'll see what we can get. Uh, I mean, worst case is going to have everything is going to be experimental, but it'll be available for to to test or do things. Yeah, um, I'm, al I'm also yeah. um, uh, kind of interested after I land this in <clears throat> getting a, like an initial version of the uh, Java 8 stuff going again. Um, it looks like um, uh, James Nelson has been having a field day <laughs> with it, and like now that uh, now that Java 8 actually has finally been released. Um, I'd like to not actually land the Java 8 stuff in, in Google 3, but land some preliminaries that would support it, like upgrading our JDT library um, and um, ASM library and fixing things that would break with Java C8. So as you know already, there's been some issues that they've found with uh, Java C8. And so at least getting those things landed wouldn't give you Java 8 support in GWT, but it would actually we'd let at least land some of the, the, the prerequisites for it. Um. Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, on, a question on the interop, if we could back up just for a second. Um, the one concern I know that we had, uh, we'd had when trying to consider the 2.7 versus 3.0 thing, just in general, what features go where, is uh, is this going to involve any sort of public changes that, uh, um, like in, in the GWT class or JSO or anything like that. That was that was the main concern, that uh, we would not be able to let people uh, move up to new compiler features but still staying with the old runtime. Yeah, as far as JS interface is concerned, it's almost a complete add-on. Uh, as far as I'm aware, there's nothing there's nothing that would break any API or older um, runtime. Um, however, if you used... If you use those features, you would one, you would break dev mode. So you, if you actually tried to start using JS interfaces, your dev mode, uh, like test cases, would start failing. And um, there may be some things in. I'm not. I'm not aware of them, but there might be. There might be some some things that might actually break on i8. Uh, it shouldn't, but. Um, th for example, things like trying to extend a native object would probably almost certainly break on i8. Um, and so, you know, if you tried to extend, you know, HTML button element, 
Yeah, yeah it's probably good. Of it as opposed to simply by virtue of being in the compiler. Yeah, I mean the general stuff like basically exporting functions and being able to call external libraries. That stuff should work on any browser. Um, still, though, we want to kind of add it as a a a, um, a flag. I think I don't know what Godcloak thinks. I mean, I think it's safer right now for us to kind of keep it uh, in a flag. I mean yeah, definitely. I, I think I should be like, I was just thinking like, if you're gonna be more aggressive to to release some of the thing, parts we think that are mature, we might just release some pieces. But I'm, I, I think having a flag is good. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I, I think so. So Colin, our, our intention is we're not going to use this in any of the libraries for 2.7, right? I think beyond that, there's a there's a good question and. Then, do we want to use them in a library? Uh, uh, yeah, I, yeah, an I think, existing library. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I think it's best to think, Colin. I think it's best to think of this as kind of like uh, elemental in a way, meaning that we're not likely to go through any of the existing GWT user classes and refactor them to actually sit on right. top of JS interface. Um, right. But basically, they'll it will be there for people to use it um, if they want to write to it manually. And I may generate another version of Elemental that uses JS interface, um, but other than that, uh, you know, it's it's not going to change anything with respect to older browsers. I think. Okay. Yeah, I think to going ahead, yeah, I think we probably have, we may have new libraries which use this stuff, mm -hmm. right? That yeah. that's a most possible scenario. Yeah. We leave the old libraries as they are, and the, the new libraries the ones that. Uh, we... I I don't think we're gonna ever try to go and change the. Existing bounce right, right now. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. We are almost uh, running out of time. Any other things that people want to like chat about? Anything that people want to bring up? So yeah, there's one quick thing I would like to say. Um, I'm actually getting pretty close on having the whole benchmarking system up and working, and I think um, I think in about a week or two we can actually start open sourcing it so that other people can play with it as well. So the benchmarking system does that require? So that basically requires hardware, right? So, so if you open source it, somebody who's to run it will will need. So um, here's what I'm planning to do right now. Um, this actually consists of three things: it's the actual benchmarks. It's a system that can. Um, the second thing is a system that can compile these benchmarks and put them on a web server, and then invoke different runners using WebDriver to actually run these tests on different. Um, machines and I get back numbers and those numbers are posted to an app engine instance we can make the app engine instance public for everyone the runners and the system that actually does the compiled stuff that needs to be run in a secure lab um, and we need to figure out a way of stamping code changes um, on the review system so that it's perfectly okay to run them on the uh, uh, performance system so the other question is the benchmark themselves the codes are the, they're all open source and uh, yes they are open source um, so a lot of lots of them are from the Octane benchmarks, which are used by V8 anyway. So okay. I've used the um, JavaScript version, ported that to Java, and then did two things: compiled that back with Grid and compared performance, and fixed some things, or at least have a list of things we need to fix in the compiler in order to make it at least as fast as the handwritten JavaScript. And the other thing that's quite interesting is actually running these benchmarks on top of the JVM because that gives us a sense of how much slower or faster are we than the JVM running on V8. And that's actually quite surprising. Sometimes we're getting pretty much dwarfed in performance, but sometimes when it comes to memory management, we're much, much better than the JVM. OK. So uh, what, uh, what about the other? So this, is this going to be compatible with the internal system we were discussing earlier? Or yes, is that's, that? Let's discuss that later. Yeah, we should talk about that okay. later on the okay. how we how we want to do this thing. But at least for the open sourcing, I think this would be a good good solution out there. Uh, it'd be great to have benchmarks uh, available publicly for Gwet. I think that uh, wasn't something we had planned on in the beginning, but yeah, hey, that's you know. Um, on the compiling side, the second part of what you were talking about, Daniel, uh, I do have a working system where you can edit code online, and some agent goes off and does the compiling for you, and then brings back working web page. Uh, the user interface is currently not usable, um, but all the rest of it is is currently working. Um, and I'm just playing with now with how to get it to uh, use the 
the newly uh, cheaper uh, compute units, the App Engine compute units, to actually do that compiling work. Okay. Great. Oh, that's um, great. A yeah. week or two, that should be ready to actually uh, have people start using it. Yeah, so we could definitely look into um, having the whole running system outside of Google as well, but for now, I think we're perfectly okay with having uh, the dedicated runners that actually run the benchmarks and the system that compiles and just running in general. Yeah, there's no um, benchmark thinking in this at all. It's, it's purely for entry point at this point, but it very easily we could set up a template that thinks in terms of benchmarks instead. Yeah, we have so an app engine account for a great project. Okay. Sounds good. Um, anything else? Well, okay. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this dashboard. Actually, it'd be uh, pretty neat to be able to do before and after performance tests when we make compiler changes. That'd be pretty yes, cool. I'm actually holding off on lots of the compiler changes because I actually want to see the whole impact in the benchmark. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there still, there still needs to be some effort in actually writing better benchmarks for all of the JLE emulation. Um, but if you put that together with uh, the proposal we discussed on specializing method calls, we can actually get the JLE emulation to the same level that JavaScript is, because currently we're not doing that great there. If you think about the puts uh, something into a map thing, where we always look up uh, the thing yeah. before, that's, that's a lot of stuff we can actually improve. Yeah, good. Let's see. Uh, I, think, I think we have one more member there. It's uh, Manuel, who's uh, in there. So just want to say hi because he joined us late. Um, yeah. Hi, Manuel. Hi. Um, so, Manuel, do you have anything you want to say? or? No, actually, yeah, yeah I am getting in touch with, uh, with the code. Uh, okay. I, I, Maintain, okay. maintaining. So the only thing is uh, we are discussing with uh, Brian and also with John things related with uh, internationalization, especially uh, patch, uh, which sent Brian and this patch is, is, is uh, produced with an internal tool in Google. So the thing is that uh, we have to discuss sometime if this tool is we are going to to have this tool and and the uh, and the differences in, in the in the in the official CL year, uh, staff, right? So we are discussing that that in in, in a private email with Brian and John. Okay. 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 Cool. Great. Um, it's okay. actually great to see. It and IT and going forward for yeah. waiting for somebody so working on that stuff. Yeah, yeah uh, well, IT has been, been around for for, for yeah, a while. Yeah. Not doing anything. I know that John Tamplin's been. Uh, he's had like a couple of patches and yeah. It's so so yeah, there, there, we had a good discussion by email, um, including like somebody from the Google internationalization team, and. Um, so they were writing some, they had some Python scripts to update the internationalization files, but um, for GWT we have Java versions. I, I think we, it sounds like, you know, John was good about explaining how stuff works and, uh, and we had a couple of patches committed. Um, so I, I, it looks like that's going to be worked out and we'll probably keep doing it much the same way we used to. There are, however, some deprecated APIs that were around for a long time, and they they require data for them that we can actually just get rid of. So um, I guess that's going to be another migration to move people off of the like. There's some very old I international API, APIs that that can just go away, and that will make the whole process easier. Okay. Okay. Sounds great. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. That that's actually really really good. I'm glad that we have people outside also engaging on this. So. Mm -hmm. uh, it, yeah, so uh, um, it looks like, you know, I'm very glad to have somebody else looking into this and learning how it all works because I never really got a really great grasp on it. Um, there's still going to be a fair amount of work that 
um, a Googler has to do, largely, you know, having to do with landing the patches and migration and um, making sure that we get Google's uh, Google's has patches to some of the underlying internationalization libraries that we need to push out into SVM tools so that they're available. <laughs> yeah, we need to see how we can make it uh, do as much as possible in, in the outside stuff, and then we do what we have to do. We, we anyway validate a lot of other things, so it's not, you know, we, we, we validate lots of outside changes. But, uh, OK, uh, let's see. Um, we are running out of time. Any, any last minute things? Yeah, I have a question for you. Is uh, about the there are a, a couple of of patches in in Gary, uh, who actually are uh, revealed. So who who pulls these these patches to the master? Uh, I I didn't quite hear you. Um, he so asked, who's going to review his patches in Garrett? Uh, um, I. Yeah. I think if John is, I think some of them John already reviewed, and I think they're ready to submit. Um, I, I think if John is okay with them, I'm, I'm pretty much okay with them too. Um, yeah, I think uh, uh, we're getting kicked out, so yeah. I think we should just follow up by 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 email. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Send him send him to me later. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thanks, folks. So, okay. Sorry right. about that. But we have to we have to go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hey, Rob, do you want to finish up on the performance system? Okay. Hmm. Everybody.